All right, everybody, I know a few people are a little bit still confused by these charts, so I'm going to do a quick synopsis of these charts because you will need to know them for your exam. So if we look at the first table, figure A, we are talking about silicous ooze. Remember, silicous ooze comes from silica producing organisms. So we have a great amount, so in this cross section of the ocean that we see right here, we have a great amount of silicous silica producing organisms at the surface and that is because a lot of them are photosynthetic which means that they require the sun so of course they're going to exist at the surface. Now we have two areas in this ocean that we're going to look at. We have an area of high productivity and we have an area of low productivity. So if we look at an area of high productivity we want to kind of understand why is that an area where there's a lot of silica producing organisms. So we look and we think, hey, silica producing organisms like cooler water. So that tells us what might be true about the water in this area. There's a good chance that it is probably a little bit cooler. And then we look again and we see that cooler um, water means more oxygen. Oxygen diffuses better in cooler water so there might be more oxygen and we know that plants really thrive on oxygen so they are probably going to thrive in an area that has cooler water with a lot more oxygen. Um, if we look at an area of low productivity, it's probably maybe warmer water or water that has less oxygen or water where there is a ton of other animal life that eat the um, organisms, so they're not going to thrive there. So we look on the ground below the areas and we notice that the side with the area of high productivity has the most ooze. The air side with um, low productivity has no ooze because the silica dissolve. Think of snow in the late fall. If it's kind of wet outside and there's not much snow falling, the snow either dissolves in the air before it hits the ground, or when it hits the ground, it dissolves. Well, think of the silica as the same way. These shells are falling, the organisms, the dead organisms are falling, and if there's only a few of them falling down, they're going to dissolve all before they hit the ground, so you're not going to get enough that build up on the ground. However, on this side, if you have a ton of them falling like a really heavy snowstorm, they're going to fall at a faster rate than they dissolve, so you're going to get this ooze that builds up on the ground. The ooze is the silica shells mixing with other minerals, clay and other stuff in the water. As we notice, there is a layer of abyssal clay, and then we have basalt, and basalt is the most common ocean rock, which is a heavy lava rock, and if we think about it, plates are made from generally lava, so a lot of them are going to be made from basalt. So that is our silicus ooze. Now let's look at figure B, which talks about a calcareous ooze. Now calcareous ooze comes from organisms that produce calcite or calcium carbonate. We talked about two of them. We talked about um, coccolithophores and we also talked about for, um, for, uh, I can't say it for imminent look in your notes. Anyway, um, again we have a bunch of calcite producing organisms at the surface because a lot of them are also photosynthetic, so they need the sunlight. So let's take a look at this entire picture as a whole. So if we see we have this area which includes a ridge. Remember ridges are where magma comes up and produces new seafloor and it spreads apart. Well calcite producing organisms like warmer water so they're going to like water that is in areas where there's going to be some kind of magma or volcano because that magma or volcano warm the water around it and since calcite producing organisms like warm water they're going to thrive in that area. So if we look we have a lot of calcite um, dead calcite organisms falling towards the ridge. So they're going to build up on the ridge. If we look on here, they built up here and here. And calcite producing organisms do not fall below the calcite compensation depth, which is 4.5 kilometers or 4,500 meters, because if they go below that depth, they dissolve basically. So they're not going to make it to any depth below 4.5 kilometers unless they're encased in clay, such as over here. These ones right here are encased in this clay. And on this side, we have these ones, which are encased in the silica organisms that are 
in this cool place, because remember, silica organisms like cool water. So in an area of upwelling where we have this cold bottom water right here that upwells and goes to the surface, we're going to have a lot of silica organisms. So these ones right here are encased in the silica. So these organisms fall and they build up and then over time, if we look at this little red X right here, over time these silica organisms get encased and these ones get encased. And well the seafloor is spreading because it's a ridge, so new magma is being made and the seafloor is spreading apart. So this red X will eventually move over here to an area that is below the calcite compensation depth because it's encased underneath the silica or it's encased underneath the clay or other sediment and it's closed off from the water above it so it's able to make it below the calcite compensation depth. And again we have basalt which is a most common heavy lava rock. So that is a quick table um, talking about figure A and figure B which make sure you know these for Monday.